Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this old video, we're going to Bethesda, Maryland to a Lululemon store. Exciting stuff. I'd never actually heard of Lululemon before researching into all of this and for those of you who hadn't heard of it either, it's an athletic store where to do like sell yoga pants and that kind of stuff. And judging by what an ex-employee wrote about it, it's quite strange, but what happened in 2011 in Bethesda is even stranger. Sorry, by the way, I said employee. They're actually called educators, the salespeople, which is honestly the stupidest thing I've heard in a while. Not really surprising when they're educating you to spend $50 on a basic t-shirt. At that store, the educators were Jane Murray and Brittany Norwood. And on the- Ah, let's roll the title. At 9.30am on the 12th of March 2011, a 911 call was made in the affluent, well-educated community of Bethesda, Maryland. Nothing quite like it happened before. Not there. And, you know, crime in Bethesda is quite low. County 911, Two women, both employees of Lululemon Athletics, were found in the back of the store that morning. Both of them had been assaulted. One of them was tied up, the other was already dead. See, the manager had arrived to the fancy, capital F, store that morning and found a horrific scene. She saw, well, blood. Heading deeper into the back of the store, they found Jaina Murray, laying in a big puddle, unresponsive. In the bathroom, they found Brittany Norwood. She was tied up, her eyes closed, but she was breathing. And so a 911 call was made. When the investigators arrived, they started to try and put together, you know, the clues, as you do. The back storeroom was, well, not good. On the emergency exit at the back of the store, there was bloody footprints leading to and fingerprints on. A man's sized 14, it seemed. It appeared that at least one of the girls tried to escape through the door, but was pulled back by whoever did this. Money was missing from the till and safe. So right away you got a robbery, more than likely gone to shit. And when 28-year-old sole survivor Brittany Norwood was able to tell what happened, that seemed to be exactly what happened. The evening before, so the 11th, the two women, Brittany Norwood, and 30-year-old Jaina Murray were closing up shop for the day and heading home. But after they closed up the shop and left, you know, just after 9 p.m., Brittany realized she left her, her purse uh, back in the store, which had her Metro card in it. So she called Jaina, who had the keys to the store, to get back in and have a goo. They were in there just after 10, but no dice. They couldn't find anything. So Jaina then gave her Metro card to Brittany as she was driving that day. And they were like, right, sorted when two men came in. They entered the store wearing ski masks. Jaina was struck by one man and dragged to the back of the store by her hair, where the man kept beating her and sexually assaulted her. Investigators did find big bunches of her hair around the place, showing how she had been brutally dragged by her hair and had tried to resist. Brittany, she was taken to the bathroom by the other man, who zip-tied her wrists and ankles. She was attacked and then he cut a hole in her trousers and sexually assaulted her too. The two men then took all the money they could find from the safe and registers and fled. The women were left beaten and bleeding. Jane and Murray passed away. She had been brutally murdered with a total of 331 different wounds on her body. There was a red toolbox beside her. Multiple tools from it were used, including a hammer, a knife, a wrench, and a heavy iron bar. 107 of the wounds on her were defensive, indicating that Jaina had put up a fight and that she was alive throughout a good deal of the attack. On her face were 25 serious 
injuries, so pretty horrific. The fatal injury to Jaina seemed to have been a stab wound to the back of the head. She also had severe bruising and bleeding in the brain. Brittany, although she had been through a traumatic incident, her injuries weren't nearly so bad. She also had Jaina's blood on her, but she would explain that away later. There were lots of people around at the time that a terrible crime happened inside the Lululemon store on Bethesda Avenue Friday night. A timeline released by police indicates employees closed the store at 9 p.m., then set the alarm and locked the door at 9.45. At 10.05 p.m., two female employees returned to pick up a forgotten item. That's when two men wearing ski masks and gloves entered behind them. Another employee found the victims when she arrived to open the store at 8 a.m. Saturday. Police think it was a crime of opportunity, a robbery that turned into rape and murder. 30-year-old Jaina Murray is described as a valiant fighter who would not have hesitated to protect herself and her 27-year-old co-worker who was beaten but survived. The crime scene may hold the best leads police have at this point. We are still in the process of collecting physical evidence and doing forensic analysis. My hope is that um, in the next few days uh, we may get additional leads uh, as a result of that forensic analysis. The attack in the heart of downtown Bethesda has residents and the business community on edge. The investigation into who these two killers were. You know, the police began investigating uh, any ski mask purchases in the area. They sent out feelers for any possible suspects. A reward of $150,000 was, was put up. The Lululemon store was right beside an Apple store. And in fact, CCTV from the Apple store would later come out, showing the employees there could, well, hear someone dying through the wall. One employee would tell the police, I heard noises coming from the right side of the store, something heavy sounding, like it was being hit or dragging, some grunting and some thudding. We approached the area of the store where the sound was the loudest. At that point, we heard some screaming or yelling. It sounded hysterical. The Apple employee said she heard two female voices, one hysterically saying, God help me, please help me. They would later come under fire for not calling the police that night. The bystander effect in action, I guess. Regardless, other CCTV from outside the Apple store would capture two men wearing all black walking uh, from the direction of the Lululemon store around the time this happened. The police would track down these two lads, but it turned out they are just busboys finishing their shift. So, no dice on that lead. Another suspect would be a homeless guy who lived in the area who had, um, you know, violent tendencies. His name was Keith Lockett. He was a regular at a local bar, right? But that night, he wasn't seen having a few sups. And in fact, an eyewitness would say they saw him walking down the street with another suspicious looking person. Keith was eventually tracked down. And he was in hospital. He had blood on him, just not Brittany's or Jaina's. It seems he had been in a fight with some other guy. And so days pass with a uh, sweet fuck all to show for it. Jaina's car was found three blocks away from the Lululemon store, and it was taken in by the police and forensically examined. Inside, they found blood. Jaina and Brittany's. Huh. You know, uh, you might be asking yourself, how'd that get there? The police, they were asking to. Brittany was then questioned by the police. She told them she'd recovered a memory, oh, it's all coming back to me now, lads, that she'd forgotten due to shock, which, which to be fair, is not uncommon. See, that night, Jaina's car had been parked directly outside the store when the girls came back in after they closed up shop. It wasn't supposed to be parked there, but they were just gonna run in and out to get the Metro card. Now, this is when things get strange. Er. Brittany told the police that, Jaina's car, which was parked on the road outside the store, the fact that it could have been towed, hey, that scared the shit out of the attackers, as in maybe someone was outside, they get rumbled. So, after attacking Brittany, they made her get Jaina's keys and park the car a little bit away. They then said to her, you know, after you uh, park the car a little bit away, come on back because we're not finished with you yet. And she did come back, which makes sense. I'll explain to you guys how it 
that night played out. Mm -hmm. Prior to him sexually assaulting me and zip tying me, they made me move her car. Okay. I know where her car is. Um, and they seemed to know where it was, where she was parked. Okay. They uh. asked, they said, where are her keys? I, I have no idea. I don't, one of them punched me in my head and made me look through her coat and her bag for them when I finally found them. Um, they said if I was to pass to anyone and open my mouth, I can consider myself dead. And that one of them would be watching the entire time. Um, and I honestly don't remember the exact lot, but they said to like, I don't know, like cross, it's almost like on the other side of Wisconsin or something. Okay. from that street. I remember seeing a cop and I was just too scared to even like him down do anything. Was that like when you left the store or when you were part? When I left the store. So when you first left the store, okay. And he was driving past in his car? Okay. She also explained why Jaina's blood was found in her, as she had been taken to the bathroom and so wasn't that close to her. And how did you fall onto Jaina? I mean, were you on your hands and your knees, or straight down, face down? On my knees. Okay. Were you straddling her, or were you actually physically, like, pancaked on top of her, or what? They pushed me on her. And... You touched her head. You touched her head? With what? And slid to the ground. Okay, so your hands got in the blood on either side of her? Yes. Okay. I know it's hard. And blood all over. You have blood all over you? And then what? And what? Did he say anything to you when he pushed you down? It's my fault. For, okay. This, this is because of you. As I'm sure you know by now, Brittany's story just reeked. Everything about it was off. And medical examinations were done on both women and it showed that neither had been sexually assaulted. Bloody footprints found were a man's sized 14. So, one of the attackers, right? Uh, no. Lululemon didn't sell shoes, but they did have shoes that size in the store. Ones they had for customers to put on when trying out clothes and stuff. When the police were examining the crime scene, only two sets of footprints were found. That man's size, you know, 14, and Brittany's. And the man's shoes, the man's size, big up, big old feet. Blood found inside both Brittany's shoes and the men's size 14 they had in the store, which maybe one of the killers took a liking to and tried on. Blood inside both those shoes showed that the same bloody sock was inside both. The same person was wearing both shoes. The zip tie that Brittany was bound with had teat marks on it, indicating she had, you know, done it herself. In fact, it seems that the robbers didn't bring anything, because everything used in the attack came from inside the store. The zip ties, the weapons, the tools, the pipes, everything that was used in this horrific incident, they just got lucky and had all this stuff lying around. Huh, it's kind of weird. Well, that's what will happen when they don't exist. Brittany, comes a point sometimes and we have to break down and get everything off of our chest. You gotta tell us what really happened. I'm telling you. Because I know what really happened. I told you what really happened. No, what you've done is you've concocted a, an incredible story that doesn't make any doggone sense. No. With the injuries that you have, they're self-inflicted. Yeah, they're self-inflicted. You did this to yourself. It's incredible that you want 
me or anyone to believe that you're lying like this overnight, haven't moved, okay? That's posed. Nobody in the world is going to believe this story. No one. He doesn't believe it. My boss doesn't believe it. When I tell your brother and your sister, they ain't gonna believe it. And your mother and your father, they're gonna say, bullshit. Can I go home? Been a little bit, but how did it start? Come on, let's get this over with. Come on, baby, let's get this over with. Nah, uh-uh. I don't know if I can let you go. Can you just tell me right now? Did you do it? I said I just want to go for it. I'm not going to f***ing let you go. But you need to tell me so I know how to talk to these guys. Because if you did, we have to get you a lawyer to defend you. And it's going to be a f***ing media sh storm. You need to tell me right now if you did. I just don't want to talk about it here. Brittany Norwood was then arrested and charged with first degree murder. It's a murder case that has stunned many here in Maryland and even grabbed national headlines. Jana Murray was laid to rest this weekend after being killed in the yoga store where she worked. Now with a twist few saw coming, her co-worker has been charged with murder. ABC's John Hendren has more on the clues that finally tipped off investigators. As we began uh, analyzing the forensic evidence, the, uh, and uh, looked at the uh, medical reports. Uh, it was not supporting what the um, uh, what uh, Ms. Norwood had told us. Norwood will appear in court tomorrow. Law enforcement experts say police will be combing through her past, looking to make sure nothing like this has ever happened to anyone else who was around her. So, what really happened that night? Well, a few days prior to the 11th of March, before the murder. Management in the store had called up everybody. They had a little store meeting because they suspected someone was stealing. Then, the night of March 11th, while Brittany and Jaina were closing up, Jaina, doing a bag check, found a pair of yoga pants in Brittany's bag. Tags still on them and all. Jaina questioned Brittany. She said she had bought the pants from another worker. She paid for them, just the other, you know, the other educator forgot to take the tags off. Brittany said, I paid for them, you call her yourself. You don't believe me. And Jaina did. Paid for them me bollocks. Then, after they closed up shop for the day, Brittany got Jaina to go back into the store to look for her Metro card. Seems that maybe they had some kind of confrontation over Brittany stealing and things got... They got the way they got. Brittany attacked Jaina with different tools. She used them one by one. The attack took at least 10 to 20 minutes, and Jaina was alive the entire time, right up until Brittany separated her spinal cord with a knife to the back of the head. After Jaina died, Brittany staged the crime scene and made up the... made up the whole spiel. She moved Jaina's car and sat in it for 90 minutes, thinking up what to do. She even went as far as cutting a hole in both their pants to stage a sexual assault. Then, she tied herself up using a zip tie and posed in the bathroom there all night waiting for the manager to discover the next day. There's people in the back of my store. One person thinks that and the other person is breathing. So, what the shit? What could make someone do this just to cover up stealing a pair of yoga pants? Right? I don't know about you, but uh, this is batshit. Let's take a look at Lululemon itself to see what kind of workplace it was, because it's also batshit. Lululemon is no typical workplace. It seems, um, kind of cultish, to be honest. One ex-educator wrote about her time served there. It's weird. Let me read out a bit, uh, of her experience. While retail employees at American Apparel or Forever 21 might spend their half-hour breaks eating pizza or smoking in the alley, my coworkers and I did sit-ups and headstands, read the self-help books in the employee library, and talked shit about gluten. Fuck you, gluten. Do you think Ocean would wear this? Another educator asked one day, modeling a purple hoodie and a pair of purple and white stretch pants in the break room. Who's Ocean? I asked. And she sighed. Tch. Who trained you? 
Ocean is our ideal customer. She does yoga every day, makes 100 grand a year, and dates a triathlete named Mountain. This has to be a parody. I stared at her, nonplussed. Pityingly, she added, Mary, we all want to be Ocean. That's why we work here. As educators, we were pressed to be our best selves, treat life like a party and never give up on greatness. If you were unhappy, angry, paranoid, just tell a different story. The idea that you could shape reality to look however you wanted suddenly seemed dangerous, easily abused, especially among my type A co-workers, who exercised and worked and exercised and worked and ate so little that it was not really a surprise that someone eventually snapped. Lululemon has gotten into trouble for fat shaming, false advertising, product quality. It's like, remember that Abercrombie and Fitch guy who said, very ironically, that only beautiful people could wear their clothes? Lululemon seems like that. And while it's no excuse for what Brittany did, it seems that the entire motive for brutally murdering Jaina was to stop her from, you know, telling the company she had been stealing. The idea is that she knew the, well, let's face it, toxic culture of the company would deal with the news of her stealing in a, um, well, harsh way. And that the only way to stop this was to handle Jaina herself. That night, you know, when they went back into the store, it seems maybe Brittany tried to convince Jaina not to report her, you know, for stealing. But it turned out that Jaina had already reported her for stealing that night. So it went from, you know, trying to convince her not to say anything to... Revenge. She snapped. Both Brittany and Jaina came from loving families. Brittany was a star soccer player, had no criminal record, though this wouldn't be the first time she would be accused of stealing. But still, doing what she did seems quite out of character, like there has to be more there, unfortunately. Brittany would never really say. During the trial, Brittany's defense sought second degree murder, that it, it wasn't premeditated, it was a spur of the moment killing. The prosecution contended that the killing was intentional and deliberate, and the jury agreed, convicting Brittany of first-degree murder. She was sentenced to life in prison, no parole. The judge said that, you know, in all of his years judging, he had never seen such a horrific attack. In 2015, Brittany requested a new trial, which was denied. The story, it's insane. The, the company sounds quite cultish sounding. I, get, I guess they have a very cultish following. I mean, if you're going to spend the money they're charging for what they're selling, you definitely, you definitely need an educator, just not the kind Lululemon is going to give you. Reading about the ex-educator and her experience, part of me is it's not surprised, to be honest with you, that Brittany ended up doing something unthinkable, snapping one day. Now, I must say that it seems like Lululemon's full-on uh, ways seem to have died down following this. If anybody out there has worked for them, please feel free to educate us in the comments. Though, what she did to Jaina over a 20-minute long attack is... Well, maybe save that for a glassdoor.com review when you've been fired. Brittany is now imprisoned inside the walls of the Maryland Correctional Institution for Women. At least, you know, they do have yoga classes there, though. Eh, on second thoughts? She might not be too keen on yoga. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you as always real soon in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.